Okay, Joker. This movie is directed by Todd Phillips, who is an American filmmaker who's also done acting. He's best known for most of the comedy movies like Road Trip, Old School, Starsky and Hutch, and Hangover, the Hangover trilogy. So I kind of like when they hire, lately, Hollywood is a little bit unorthodox with when they hire a director because usually a director, it is the, like their first time doing this type of movie. This is his first time doing a, I would call this movie more like an autobiography of the Joker. If the, This is about as reality based that the Joker will be if let's just say if Arthur Fleck was a real person, it would be this movie. This would be the documentary of Arthur Fleck becoming his alter ego Joker. Okay, so the opening scene is where Arthur Fleck's about to go on. It looks like he's uh, he's gonna be he's gonna do some stand up and he's doing this this creepy looking face. You know, he's he's doing the Joker. You know, he's putting his fingers on his face, and he's he's got tears running down his face with the clown makeup on, and, you know, it just it really just sells the movie right away. The opening scene is, yeah, it tells a very, just a very depressing story about a guy who is beaten down by life, and he, he everything around him is just horrible. You know, he has a very depressing life, a very depressing way that he looks at his life also. Okay, so he's talking to the therapist and hands her a journal and there are these, and he's kind of, he tells her, these are my personal thoughts and he, she looks at the, the journal, there's just a bunch of words or sentences that have something to do with like death, just about death itself and then there's a bunch of crazy looking pictures of uh, mutilated bodies. It's it's pretty graphic. It's pretty crazy stuff here. But this guy's living with his mom, and he he's you know he takes care of her. He loves his mom. I mean, I mean, Arthur loves his mom, and he has this strange condition where he laughs uncontrollably. Like he has this laughter that any and he he'll like kind of like cough slightly cough a little bit. So this is obviously some kind of strange and painful condition for him that he has no control over. So he has this, he's a failed comedian by night and a clown by day. He's, so his co-workers hand up this gun and he tries to, he tries to use it. I mean, the guy doesn't know anything about this stuff. So he kind of makes a hole in his apartment when he tries to, he tries to use the gun. So he's in this subway, subway train and he's, you know, he's just going about his business and these guys look like they're going to attack this lady and they start to beat him down and he just starts unloading on them. He starts killing, he kills all of them and he, he goes after this one. He did, he finally, you know, finishes killing him with the gun. I mean, this is his first time actually killing. This is kind of like a milestone in a way for the Joker. This is, his, this is, this is the definitive Joker origin story that we've never had, that a lot of us have always wanted, but we didn't know if it was going to play out in a movie setting, a standalone, standalone films don't always work, you know, and I, and Joker, it really, it delivers in such a monumental level for me, so he, he kills them, I mean, these guys, these are scumbags, they look like stockbrokers from Wall Street, and he, so his mom, she, she has these strange uh, talks about work. Uh, she's worked for uh, uh, Thomas Wayne, Bruce Wayne's father, and I guess she doesn't work for him anymore or something like that. And he's always writing letters to him. And uh, and Thomas Wayne is uh, looks at his employees like family. So she but she kind of takes this that that ethic literally because she's she's. She's been stalking uh, Thomas Wayne for years, and only Arthur doesn't know it at first. So he decides to read some of her letters, and it looks like he might be Thomas Wayne's illegitimate son and half brother of Bruce Wayne. And Bruce Wayne's a young Bruce Wayne is on this movie. If you guys ever seen the show Gotham, 
there's a young Bruce Wayne out there as well, and this is like the first time he's, you know, you, you see something like that. And this is very important because I want you guys to know how good this movie, and we're going to talk about the controversy right after. So it turns out that he's not really, she didn't have an affair with uh, Thomas Wayne because they kind of, it was suggested that she had an affair and, and Arthur Fleck, is, Arthur is the the result of that affair and she's basically just crazy. So I mean, I just every aspect of this movie of the Joker's, uh, how he works, how his mind works and how his life is, is explored on this movie. So Arthur goes to Thomas Wayne, one of Thomas Wayne's, uh, I guess his, his, I guess he has some kind of party for his employees or something like that. Kind of like, you know, kind of like in previous Batman movies where you see Bruce Wayne have these people over or whatever at his house and he confronts him and then Thomas tells him, oh, your mom is crazy. That's not true. So he punches him. He starts laughing and, he's, and Arthur just starts laughing and he punches him. And this is when he was inside the bathroom. I mean, if I was in a bathroom with some crazy looking guy looking at me laughing and telling me that he might be my illegitimate son, I would probably freak out too, man. I would, I would be like, what the hell is this guy talking about? So, Arthur's mother, she's worked for the, the Waynes for years. It's just that she's been unable to, I guess, to let go. She's been infatuated with Thomas Wayne. So, he kind of like puts, he does the Joker face on his, on Bruce Wayne's face. You know, he puts his fingers on his mouth and he does the, the smiley face. And you could see a young, also a young Alfred, Alfred come out and he's, he's like, what the hell is this guy doing? He's some crazy guy's touching Bruce and he tells him, to, you know, he, he tells him to get out. So, so Arthur beats him up. He's kind of like, he slams him up against the fence and he runs off. And probably one of the, it's not forgettable, but probably the least, I don't know, just the, the thing that you probably won't really think twice about is, Zazie Beats, who, by the way, she does a very uh, charming performance on here, but you don't really, she d doesn't really need to be there, so she's kind of like this person in Arthur's life. She's not actually in Arthur's life, but she, she's just being nice. It's just like when you when you think a girl likes you or something, but you're she doesn't really like you, she's just being nice with you or something like that, you know? And... She supports him. She's right there at the comedy club laughing at his... I mean, Arthur is not funny. He's known as the Joker. This is the... This Joker is not funny. This movie is not funny. There's maybe one scene, and I'll let you guys know in a couple minutes from now what that scene is. So Arthur, he's taking notes and watching the other comedian perform, and he's... There's like this strange thing going on where he, he he's in a different world. I mean, this guy, he's losing his mind. He's pretty crazy already, so he laughs uh, after the punchline, before the punchline, and, and he doesn't laugh in unison with the people when they're laughing at the punchline, so it's kind of strange. He's in his old little world. He's in a, he's kind of like in a fantasy world. A delusion, he's in a very delusional state also, so he, the outside world around him is not just not there for him. He's just not all there. Just, you know, your textbook psychotic person. You know, he's not in tune with what's around him. So, Robert De Niro is also in this movie. And by the way, Robert De Niro always nails any performance he ever does. I mean, Robert De Niro is my bro, man. No, he's not. Of course, we're not related. But, you know, I have I have some Italian heritage in me. So, he's like, look at this guy. I mean, he's basically making fun of Arthur Fleck. You know, he's saying, okay, Arthur, this guy's not funny. He would, it would be a joke. The guy, this guy's basically a joke. I kind of think that, that Joker should have been funny and kind of, it probably would have been in a dark comedy sense, but he's not funny on this movie. There's nothing funny going on on this movie. It's 100% it's serious and it's serious and it really draws you in and it makes you feel for this guy. I mean, you feel sorry for this guy, but you feel for his situation, what, it, what he's becoming, the way he's, the, the world's just crumbling around him. The world around him is it's just not he's it's he's there it's like he's there and he's not there it's your textbook psychological breakdown so there's a scene that takes place that he walks into 
her apartment and she's like, what are you doing here? Can you please get out of my apartment. She doesn't tell him, like, oh, my God, please just get out of here. Yeah, of course she's freaked out. I mean, if you walked in and you saw a guy, some, some guy that looked like, you know, Joaquin Phoenix, like Arthur Fleck, yeah, you're probably, you know, every, anybody would freak out. So there's a strange scene where it looks like that he had, he sleeps with her. Like they, they ha I guess they have sex or something like that. And it doesn't actually happen. It's just like all delusions of his own mind that are, that are, that play out in his mind. Like these things that are not real, but he has these strange visions that are not real that are being played out on the screen. And when you're watching this movie and it's, and it's very, you know, it, it, it really engages you and draws you in more to the movie when you see the way this guy is just losing his mind completely. A couple seconds later, there's a, a siren going off in the apartment, and it kind of, it's kind of suggesting that he maybe he killed her. They don't. It does. It you don't know if he killed her. You don't know if he actually, you know, killed her or something. You don't know if it actually happened. You know, it could be because of something else. But I kind of it, it, it kind of begs the question: Is this is not a this is not a slasher flick? This is not where you see Joker just kill people at random or anything like that. This is really a just a, this is just really a mental meltdown by somebody who's has guy the guy's life is horrible. I mean, basically, it, the guy's life is horrible, you know, and he, and his. He's a, he has a very, probably one of the best character moments on this movie is where he he's in the hospital and he finds out that his mother, when he was young, she she had this boyfriend and I guess the boyfriend abused him. I don't know if it was sexually, but I know it, he was he was tied to a, a chair. They don't show the scene though, but they they kind of convey that he. But her boyfriend uh, might have molested him or beat him to half to death, and so he just and of course it comes like there's a part where he where he says probably one of the best lines of the this entire movie. There's a lot of really good dialogue on this movie, character building moments, moments where you really feel for this guy, where you see him try to try to like he's. He's on meds at the beginning of the movie. He has a medical condition. He's, he's seeing a therapist in the beginning. And they, I guess they run out of funding or something like that. And he, he does not even get his me, his medication because he's on, like I think, I think like seven different medications. And the therapist just tells him, okay, we don't have any more funding, so we're not going to be able to give you any more medicine to try to suppress that. Just that comes the part where he says, he goes, I used to think my life was a tragedy, but not, but I, I realize it's, it's just a comedy. It's not exactly how he says it, but I want to say it that way, that it's, it's a comedy to him. Everything's funny to him. So he, he proceeds to suffocate his mother with a pillow because his mother was, has been lying to him and he decides to kill her because she's the reason for his pain and the reason he's out of his mind, going out of his mind. You know, before this happens, the cops came to question her or they took her in because she's been stalking Thomas Wayne, Bruce Wayne's father for years. So they finally take her and she has a stroke and that's how she ends up in the hospital. And he's like, what are you guys doing? You know, like he, I mean, he loves his mother. He really loves his mother. He's not just this sadistic killer that decides to just start killing people. I mean, I'm not... I'm going to get to that to the end of this video. I'm not going to come to, I'm not, definitely not going to condone anything that he does, but I'm just trying to tell you guys from a character perspective, a character standpoint. Well, the two cops, they've been questioning him, and they see him there. Probably another one of the best scenes. There's some scenes in this world where he's not saying absolutely nothing, and Joaquin Phoenix just commands. He just, you get immersed into this movie. You get, he is Arthur Fleck, he is the Joker, because the this is probably going to be one of the most iconic scenes in cinema from years to come where he does that. You see in the trailer where he does the, these strange dance recitals and he's on the steps. This is after he kills and the cop, the cops see him and they start and he, so he runs 
he sees him, he starts to run off, and they run after him. So he makes it to the Murray show. So he, before he makes it to the Murray show, he gets his phone call from, I guess, one of his uh, secretaries or something to come on the Murray show. And he, accept, he accepts, and it probably one of the most creepiest scenes of the entire movie. He's kind of rehearsing you by you by watching the Murray show about coming out and talking and being the person that he wants to be. And, and because he, he he looks up to Murray, like Murray's is one of, he's a fan of Murray, of Robert De Niro's character. And Robert De Niro just wants to make fun of him, just wants to make a fool out of him. And he's rehearsing and he puts a gun to his head. So it, suggesting he's going to take his life on, on, on the air when, during the interview. And I want to talk, also talk about how he became the Joker on this movie. If you haven't seen this movie, you should, you should definitely see it. He's really skinny. He cut a lot of weight. I mean, I've seen this before. Actors that cut weight to, to just because they're so committed to the role that they almost endanger their own health just to make a movie for crying out loud. This is because they love the art form of filmmaking, of acting, and because they're here to entertain us. They're here to give us a quality entertainment, if you will. So his co some of his co-workers come over, the big guy and the, the vision guy come over, and he just, so he stabs the big guy, and he just stabs him to death, and he's got blood all over himself, and he's, he's without a shirt on. So it looks, it, if you, if you have, you see the trailers, how it looks, he's really skinny, so it, it makes him look even more creepier. This is probably one of the, yeah, he's probably the, I won't say he's the best Joker. I'll talk about that later, but he's probably the creepiest Joker I've ever seen on screen. He's just, this is just an artist, an actor who's just really dedicated, dedicated to his craft. I mean, you've got to take this guy seriously. This guy's definitely not here to, to mess around. I mean, he owns this movie. He's a scene stealer. I mean, this guy is just fantastic. So the little, little bitch guy's freaking out. And he tries to, he's like, Yo, you've always been nice to me, I, you, you can go now. And the little guy, the little midget guy, he's like, he's trying to uh, do the last, but he can't reach it. Because what is he, like three feet tall? And, and so Arthur undoes the last, because you know what I mean, for, just for uh, a couple seconds, you, you kind of, I kind of thought that he was gonna actually going to kill the, the midget guy, midget dude, also, but... But he lets him go, you know, so like I said, this movie is not a slasher flick. You're not going to go see a mindless slasher flick. This is not a slasher flick, flick where you see a guy for two hours just killing, butchering people. This is not, this is that, this is not that movie. So he, he's on the run for the cops and he finally, he makes it to the Murray show. But before he does, he puts his, the first time we see him with his Joker makeup, kind of, he only puts the white makeup like on his face, and he he's doing these strange movements, and he really looks unsettling. Like, yeah, you know, you don't would want to see this guy in a dark alley. You don't want to see this guy in your nightmares. And he tells the the people before he goes on stage, he's like, "Can you guys introduce me as Joker?" And he goes on stage, and he before he goes on stage, he's smoking a cigarette. He just he just chilling, smoking a cigarette, and he's. And he's doing, you know, he's doing that that strange dance he does on this movie. That's that, like I said, he, there's moments where he doesn't say anything. Some of the best acting is physical acting. It's not just becoming somebody for the duration of a film. It's becoming something, you know, getting into that performance. And he comes out and he tells Murray that he he killed somebody. He he killed his mother. He killed these. Uh, that guy, the, the big guy, and then Murray's like, uh, are you serious, you know, at first he's like, are you serious, you really kill those people, and he, and he tells him, are like, are, are, how can you say that, how can you just come on here and say that, are, are you serious, you really kill those people, you realize what you did, and outside there's a, just a huge riot taking place, a bunch of guys in clown masks that are inspired by Arthur's, by Arthur's trail of, of destruction, and you know, and all this is happening when when Arthur decides, yeah, it looks like he's gonna he's gonna take his own life on camera. So he probably one of the most. This is probably I've seen you've seen I've seen a many deaths on a movie, but the few 
really actually uh, imitate reality of what would really happen. And he he shoots Murray and he shoots Murray in the head. And but the way they did it, the way the camera work is done, the way the the scene is done, the movements of the camera and the photography, the the cinema photography is just it, it's just yeah, it's very unsettling. It looks like like just like for instance, like just say you saw somebody on, on television. You know, of course, we don't want to see that. But what I'm saying, if somebody actually killed somebody on on the air on a on a television show, this is this is exactly what it would look like. And it, it is yeah, it, it's very disturbing. So he just walks up to the camera and he's just like talking into it, and it, you, you kind of you don't really see a whole lot, but you see like a fist just ram him right in the face, and he's. The cops get apprehend him, and so he's outside inside the uh, the back seat of the car of the cop car, and the, and the cops are like, "You inspired all this," and he's like, oh, "Isn't it beautiful?" And just out of nowhere, what I like about this movie also, you don't know it's not predictable. You don't know what's going to happen next, and probably there's too way too many movies in Hollywood right now where there is you, you already know what's going to happen already. You, it's so predictable, you know, and they ram the car, and he's all bloodied up, bruised up, the cops are dead, and, and they're, they save him, and he, this really, this uh, other really creepy character moment scene where he has blood on his, kind of smothered on his mouth a little bit, and he makes the Joker smile with his own blood, and it's just, yeah, it's, it's pretty insane stuff here, and he finally embraces who he was meant to be, who he who he believes was he was meant to be, and he, he's the leader of all these just like these killer clowns, just causing chaos everywhere. You know, basic riot stuff. You know, turning over cars, burning up, looting, all that kind of stuff. And probably one of the most pivotal moments of this film, because we we got to remember that this is this is Joker is a part of the Batman universe, so. It look kind of reminds me a little bit of all every Batman movie I've seen where you see Bruce Wayne's parents die, where they get shot or something like that. I, I saw, we saw it on the original Batman with Michael Keaton. We saw it with the more recent Batman movies. And it's done so well. It kind of, it kind of feels like they took like a montage clip of all the previous Times where we see an on this, the on screen death of Bruce Wayne's family, and you know at some point he's gonna in his lifetime he's gonna meet Bruce Wayne all grown up as Batman. So it kind of I mean if Bruce Wayne or Thomas Wayne or anything ha have anything to do with Batman would not have been on this movie. It wouldn't have made a difference because this this movie is still good. But it's good without it. It doesn't make a difference. The final scene of this movie is probably another, just like this is a movie that you'll that you'll see clips about, like when they when they talk about the best movies ever made. This is I I I could say this that Joker is gonna be up there with all every just legendary movie that has ever been you know uh, seen in the movie theater. Because the next scene, he's in Akron, Akron Asylum. You know, there's another another Easter egg. That this is to remind us that this is kind of like a, a Batman pre-equal, a origin story for the for uh, Arthur Fleck, and he's talking to the to the therapist again, and, and he's like, "I just thought of something funny," and she's like, "What are you talking about?" Uh, he's like, "You know, he's telling her, oh, you won't, you want to, you wouldn't understand." So you see him walk out of the room, and you can see like. Blood stains on the on his feet. He's like, I mean, did he really kill that woman, or is he just imagining all that? Because he does a lot of imagining, uh, like a lot of he has a lot of strange, just crazy visions. You don't know if he actually killed that lady. Like maybe he killed her, and then he you could see him running around back and forth with these orderlies chasing them around. Okay, now I want to talk about all the uh, just. I want to just make con a, a point here. Okay, first of all. Number one, I I see I see a lot of controversy surrounding this movie, and it has a lot to do with the mass shootings we've been having that have we've been having 
and I I don't think that uh, art imitates life, and it does because there's a lot of evidence of that because the the Dark Knight with Heath Ledger, uh, rest his soul, that it was inspired, that somebody was inspired by Heath Ledger's Joker to go kill people. And yeah, if you're that, that'll happen if you're you're weak minded and you you don't have any kind of there's no there's no there was a shooting that you guys remember in 2008 a shooting in Colorado. You don't see the signs of anybody doing stuff like this. But I know I, I have a, a nephew who who's actually but he. They do like a special program where you you kind of like keep an eye on um you know like kind of like kind of like a, not really like a therapy session, but you you try to help the uh, keep an eye on on all your students because this I mean okay hindsight being hindsight Joker it doesn't make a difference if this movie was not released we're still getting mass shootings that's what I'm trying to say and my take on it no it's just that I don't get inspired by this. I'm not, you know, I'm just a regular person. I have, I'm actually, I actually care about people. You know, I actually, I'm kind of like, I have a soft spot for people and I care what happens, what happens to people. But Joker is just pure entertainment. It is, that does not inspire people to kill. It does, some people might get inspired because some people are just making excuses or they do, they have such weak minds that, they're actually, they would actually do something like that. And I want to talk about, like, when I went to go see Joker just the other, yesterday, there was, we had, co like, four different cops. We had, like, uh, security everywhere, you know, because people are so afraid right now. And they're taking, I, I'm glad they did that. They're taking the necessary precautions because you don't want to second guess, guess yourself, you know. So, basically, I had security when I went to go see Joker. I had, there was cops there. I, I hope nothing happened because I was as I was leaving there was like four cops talking to this uh, to some of the ushers and uh, uh, in the movie theater. So does art imitate life? Yes, it does. If you don't have a if you don't have a head on your shoulders, you know what I mean. Because I've never committed a, cr a crime in my entire life, you know, and I I've never done drugs or like, like that. I don't. I mean, I'm not saying you know art reflect doesn't. It not was not looked at. He's not a drug addict, basically. So he's not a drug addict, you know. And it doesn't inspire me or anything like that. For me, because I have my own, I have I have character, I have my own mind, and I I'm not easily influenced by anything. I mean, you could tell me anything, and it won't influence me. Of course, it's it just it just really comes down to if you have a weak mind or you're really you really need help. If you really need help, if you, Whoever watches this video at all, you know anybody that needs that there there might be signs. I'm not saying you get you become a cop and go question people, but if you think you know somebody who might be think might be depressed or I sound like one of those A those those AA meetings or something like that, but for real, I really do care about people. And if you see that any signs that somebody's gonna you know uh, the kind of signs you see, like on, uh, for instance, on uh, on Joker in this movie, that could could eventually turn into a mass shooting. Do something about it. I mean, I'm not uh, suggesting you call the cops or anything like that, or put this person in 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 a, in a bunny farm. But I'm just saying, if you could do something to to stop any any more, you know, because it it just really saddens me what has been happening with all these mass shootings, with all these. Uh, people, it, it's it, it could be anything. It, it could be racism. It could be just people that went that decided to take their own lives in their own hand and went out and just start killing people. You know, especially in the schools right now. And it just it just really saddens me. And I I, I don't know. It's very unsettling. And so, does Joker inspire people to kill? It can if you're if you're not if you're not if you're that gullible. Or, I don't know. Just just don't have have it. You don't have. You're you're young. You're naive. You're you're go, you're going to crush. You've been picked on or something like that or whatever. Yeah, it can happen. But when it all comes down, Joaquin Phoenix is a great actor. He's an amazing actor. He really embodies the spirit of the Joker, which is a fictional 
Let me, let me just, before I close out this video, let me make, let me make it abundantly clear. This is just entertainment. It's not real. It's not reality. You don't have to take it seriously. It's there to entertain us. It's, it's also there to make us think too. There's social, kind of like social commentary or messages on this movie about what can happen. Why we, why do people, uh, you know, flip out and start killing people, you know, and where can we see the signs of this happening, you know, and I kind of went out to a lot with this video a bit. This is such a great movie. Okay, I'm going to give this, I am going to give this movie my first, let's celebrate this movie's Oscar worthy of the year because, you know, besides Avengers Endgame, but that's, it's going to be really hard to figure out what is the number one movie of the year for me and for a lot of us. But let's celebrate this movie's Oscar worthy because from the music to the cinema photography to the physical acting to the dialogue to the story to the kit to the buildup of all this that happens to Joker, who he, how he becomes Joker is just brilliant. It's just it's this movie is brilliant. It's not like I said. It's not endor This movie's not endorsing violence. This is just pure entertainment, but it also makes you think. Think about what can happen, what's been happening. All right, you guys, I hope I covered everything. I know I kind of went on long because this movie is just, it, it, it really, I really want to show you. This is a spoiler review, so you guys know what happened. If you're not going to see the movie, if you, you should see this movie. I, 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 I know I've said that before. You should 110% go see this movie. It go go to it with an open mind. Don't go there, you know, living in fear. I did feel, yeah, it was kind of weird when I saw those cops over there and not knowing what was going on. Okay, thank you for uh, everybody who subscribed recently. I really appreciate you. I really appreciate you guys. If I could, I would name you by name for sub subscribing to my blog. I really appreciate it. Put a like below this video if you guys like this video. I hope, I really hope you do because I really, you know, I, I really dedicated some time that I did have to make this video the best I can, the best review possible review I could of this movie because this movie commands the attention, it grabs your attention, so it really makes you think, it also entertains you, it also makes you cry, it also horrifies you, yes. All right, you guys, I will see you guys here soon, and I am still your reviewer, and I am the YouTube alternative. Thank you.